Honorable Mr. Justice V. V. Nagaratna, Judge Supreme Court of India, Dr. Joanna Newman, Secretary General of the Association of Commonwealth Universities, Mr. Naveen Jindal, Chancellor and Benefactor of OP Jindal Global University, Mrs. Savitri Jindal, Chairperson of OP Jindal Group, Ms. Shalo Jindal, Chancellor of OP Jindal University, Mrs. Aruna Oswal, Chairperson Abhay Oswal Group, Venkatesh Jindal, Yashaswini Jindal, Seema and the entire family members of the Jindal uh, family, members of the governing body, management council and academic council of the university, registrar, deans of the schools of JGU, heads of institutions, uh, faculty members, staff members, students, and of course, graduating students, parents and their relatives. This conv convocation is very special for me. My parents are there. Welcome to the convocation and thank you Pratibha, Abhimanyu and Avantika for being here. Our convocation and Founders Day is a very momentous occasion for us to come together and to mark a very important beginning and indeed a new beginning for our graduating students. I believe this convocation is special for five important reasons. First, it is an occasion for celebration. It's an occasion for celebration of the outstanding achievements of our students who are graduating from OP Jindal Global University. It is a celebration of their accomplishments, their indeed efforts, journeys, struggles, which ultimately culminated in today's recognition and indeed award of the degrees. So congratulations to each one of our graduating students. I could do no better than the football player Pele who said, and I quote, success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do, unquote. The second significance of the convocation is our moment to pay gratitude. Our expressions of gratitude to our parents, for the students who have uh, struggled through and the parents have made both personal and professional sacrifices for their children to do well. It's an opportunity for us to express our gratitude to our teachers, our mentors and many others who have contributed to our success. In fact, the success of any individual on this occasion is not only attributed to him or her, but so many people contributed to our success. And this is a momentous occasion for us to express our gratitude. As Ralph Waldo Emerson said, and I quote, cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good thing that comes to you and to give thanks continuously. And because all things have contributed to your advancement, you should include all things in your gratitude, unquote. You could also try to practice the African philosophy of Ubuntu, which essentially means, and I quote, I am what I am because of who we all are. And this is an occasion for us to express our deep felt gratitude to everybody who has contributed to our success. Third is about taking stock of the present and planning for the future. In fact, this idea of planning for the future is a very important moment because you have all worked hard to reach where we are. You are going to be graduating today from OP Jindal Global University. Numerous opportunities are out there, but you have a phenomenal education that is going to open numerous doors. But with high quality education and privilege that you have got, it comes with great responsibilities. And that responsibility is what you will be shouldering. Take stock of your present so that you can charter your future. Now, of course, there are so many ways by which you can charter your future, but one idea that I want to give it to you is none other than from Swami Vivekananda, and I quote, take up one idea, make that idea your life, think of it, dream of it, live on that idea, let the brain, muscles, nerves, every part of your body be full of that idea and just leave every other idea alone. That is the only way to success uncode, none other than Swami Vivekananda. Now the fourth aspect of the convocation is our ability to make an impact on the lives that you're going to touch in the future. None other than Spider-Man said, and I quote, with great power comes great responsibility. Education ought to reach, lead to enlightenment, emancipation and empowerment. And that is exactly what education ought to be doing. Mahatma Gandhi famously observed, and I quote, a small body of 
determined spirits fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission can alter the course of history. Unquote. The education that you have received at OP Jindal Global University has empowered you to change the course of history. And that also means that you will be acting responsibly for that future. The fifth aspect of this convocation is to celebrate our benefactor and indeed his family, Chancellor Naveen Jindal. In fact, on 30th October 2006, I had the privilege to meet him for the first time and my life fundamentally changed since then. I was introduced to him by Dr. H.R. Bharadwaj, the then Union Law Minister, and I want to pay tribute to him on this occasion who is not with us, but his wife, Mrs. Bharadwaj, is with us. And thank you so much, ma'am, for all those conversations in 14 Tuklak Road at his home when the very foundations of this university was laid down. Mr. Jindal, when I met him for the first time, was fascinated by the idea and spent the next year essentially thinking more actively about the idea of building a world-class university. He not only committed to making substantial financial resources, but also ensured academic freedom, autonomy, independence, and ensuring a not-for-profit governance, a rare feature for a private university in India. Mr. Jindal, along with his family, particularly Shalo Jindal, were very conscious of the fact that we need to ensure quality and promote excellence, and that is exactly what we did. He joins in the extraordinary group of other philanthropists around the world, including LIU Yale, who set up Yale University, Jane and Leland Stanford, who set up Stanford University, and of course, John Harvard, who are part of the Harvard University, but also other Indian philanthropists, including uh, Madan Mohan Malviya, who was involved in setting up the Banaras Hindu University, none other than J.R.D. Tata, who was involved in Indian Institute of Science Bangalore, the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. Mr. Jindal made this extraordinary commitment to building a university and that has indeed shaped so many generations of students and their lives. Not only this journey began on 30th September 2009 in Sonipat with only 100 students and 10 full-time faculty members and 20 administrative staff and four classrooms in a 100,000 square feet of built-up space with accommodation for those 100 students we expanded and expanded fast. 15 years from that date, today we have 12 different schools in law, business, international affairs, public policy, liberal arts and humanities, journalism and communication, art and architecture, banking and finance, environment and sustainability, psychology and counseling, languages and literature, and public health and human development. We moved from 100 students in 2009 to nearly 11,000 students now. We moved from 10 full-time faculty members to 1,200 full-time faculty members. We moved from literally 20 administrative staff to 1,000 plus administrative staff. All through this expansion, we maintained the one to nine faculty student ratio, which has enabled us to maintain that excellence. Not only the vision was to be building a world-class university, but a global university. That also meant that these 1,200 faculty members come from 52 countries in the world and they live and work in Sonipat, Haryana, Jagdishpur village. We simply made Haryana the global epicenter of intellectual engagement and that was possible because of the vision and philanthropic contribution of our chancellor and benefactor, Mr. Naveen Jindal. In fact, Mr. Jindal essentially is the, today's Andrew Carnegie. As some of you know, Andrew Carnegie was part of an extraordinary effort to build great institutions. Andrew Carnegie built nearly 3,000 libraries across the United States and Europe. He was also responsible and indeed uh, was clearly with a vision to build institutions, the Carnegie Mellon University, the Peace Palace in Netherlands, and numerous other universities, academic institutions. All of that was built by Andrew Carnegie. Now, many people may not know that Andrew Carnegie was a steel tycoon. In fact, the last century, he was the richest steel tycoon and clearly the number one richest steel tycoon of America, setting up the American Steel Company. Naveen Jindal is today's Andrew Carnegie. His contribution to philanthropy is in that league in which he has not only made that commitment, but fulfilled the vision of 
numerous individuals and the 8,000 alumni and the 11,000 students and generations from now, others who will be part of. So thank you very much, Chancellor Mr. Jindal, for your leadership and indeed your farsightedness. As I end my speech, I want to share some personal views and perspectives to the graduating class of 2023. Always remember the words of Bhagavad Gita, recognizing that it will not be easy to follow. Karmani evadika raste ma phaleshe karachana ma karma phalahu turbu ma the sangotsva karmahe. You have a right to karma actions, but never to any fruits thereof. You should never be motivated by the results of your actions, nor should there be any attachment in not doing your prescribed activities. For the last two decades, I have been hugely inspired by a person by name Dr. Kent Keith. Of course, I discovered about him very recently. He was a Rhodes Scholar, had degrees from the University of Oxford, Harvard University, the University of Hawaii Law School, and also a doctorate from the University of Southern California. Now, of course, this story is quite very personal. Now, Kent had written a poem in 1968 when he was 19 years old as an undergraduate student at Harvard University with a vision to inspire young leaders to take up leadership and selfless leadership for changing the world and making the world better. Now, of course, that poem went around the world completely unknown to him. And most of the time, if you Google, you will find that poem with no name attributed. In 1997, Kent himself discovered that Mother Teresa had hanged up that poem in her office, in her room in Calcutta at the Christian's home, at the children's home in Calcutta. Now, of course, when he came to know about it, the world discovered that the true author of this poem, which I'm about to read shortly, is a man by name Dr. Kent Keith. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to let you know that yesterday I spoke to Dr. Kent Keith, who is now 75 years old and living with his family in Honolulu, Hawaii. He was thrilled to know that I have been promoting this poem all these years. And of course, he sends his warm greetings to all the graduating students. He mentioned two things in our most inspiring short conversation that I had with him yesterday. And he said, first, it's important for us to find personal meaning in the face of adversity. And that was true for all of us when we went through COVID. Many others have faced other crises, sometimes a death in the family, loss of business, or other kinds of hardships and struggles that we face in life. We need to find personal meaning in the face of adversity. But the second thing what Ken said was even more interesting. He said we need to find personal meaning in the face of success. Because successful people not necessarily are always happy. There are so many things that contribute to one's own happiness and of course one's own success. And he says, and I quote, power, wealth, fame, prestige and social recognition. Power, wealth, fame, prestige and social recognition, the usual parameters of happiness may not give you happiness. You need to find purpose and meaning to your life to seek happiness. In a fascinating book entitled The Paradox of Personal Meaning, Dr. Kent Keith observes, and I quote, there are things in life we can't control. What we can control is our inner lives. We get to decide who we are going to be and how we are going to live. And we can live our faith and we can live our values and we can be close to our family and friends and we can do what is right and good and true no matter what no matter what and doing that always be a source of meaning for us even when the world is going badly we can still find personal meaning at the end of this speech i want to take this moment to quickly recognize the presence of Sri R. Venkatramani, a professor at our university, is also the Attorney General for India. Thank you very much, Mr. Venkatramani, for being part of this occasion. Of course, Professor Surat Singh, both of whom have been teaching at Jindal. Lastly, I want to close by reading the paradoxical commandments of Dr. Kent Keith as a guide to life for young graduates of JGU. And Dr. Keith had written this when he was 19 years old in the year 1968. And I quote, People are illogical, unreasonable, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, 
you will win false friends and true enemies succeed anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness will make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The biggest men and women with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest men and women with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. People favor underdogs but follow only top dogs. Fight for a few underdogs anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. People really need help but may attack you if you do help them. Help people anyway. Give the world the best you can. You will get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have got anyway. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2023. Thank you very much.